Nature and wildlife did not go unharmed during World War I. Entire species that once habituated peaceful regions had to migrate in a collective effort to survive the onslaught of man. During the harsh winter season at the Eastern Front in 1917, Russian and German soldiers were witnesses to a species' commitment to defending its territory from the human invaders. It was man's ancient domestic friend, the wolf. As the combat reached a trench stalemate, vicious packs of starving wolves began to pick off rear squads that ventured into the forests of Eastern Europe. Casualties began to mount up to the point that Russians and Germans had to make a truce to hunt down the canines. Once they got rid of them, they got back to the usual business, killing each other. Frozen Hell in the Eastern Front World War I was a conflict that changed human history forever. Over 50 million men were mobilized for combat. Civilian and military casualties surpassed 20 million. More than 55 million people were injured. The level of carnage affected soldiers forever. Shell shock, the precursor of what is now called PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, went rampant among the fighting men. Entire cities were destroyed and heavily damaged. Beautiful countrysides and landscapes were devastated by four years of gruesome combat. Gas attacks, machine gun fire, and intense artillery barrages that ravaged the battlefield for days and left craters the size of small ponds took their toll in the environment. Forest fires, thousands of kilometers of dug trenches and tunnels in which soldiers lived, bled, and died, altered the topography of Europe as it had never happened before. But the war did not just affect humans. It dramatically changed ecosystems and wildlife. Thousands of animals had to flee no man's land to avoid the hecatomb. Predators and prey alike were abruptly disturbed in the hunting grounds in their fight for survival. One such species was the wolf that roamed the snowy lands of Eastern Europe and Russia. This intelligent and territorial animal was forced to defend its land from the invading human armies of Russia and Germany. These vicious wolf attacks would give foot to one of the most unique stories of World War I. The Wolves Strike Back During the harsh winter of 1916 and 1917, the Eastern Front stretched for more than a thousand miles. From the Baltic Sea in the north to the Black Sea in the south, Austrian, German, and Russian forces had reached a stalemate similar to that of the Western Front. Trenches ran from one extreme of Europe to the other. No man's land and sporadic offensives had returned once again, and soldiers often wondered if the war would last forever. Sub-zero temperatures and unstoppable snowfall wreaked havoc on the supply lines. Soldiers in the rear began to die from the mortal temperatures while others starved to death. But the death toll rapidly increased. Some men began to disappear without leaving a trace. At first, both Russians and Germans believed that the rear guards simply deserted or wandered off into the forest and got lost. But the truth was more sinister. It turned out that the humans were not the only mammals struggling to eat hot food and survive. Wolves from the Vilnius Minsk region found it extremely difficult to find prey, and they were hungry. The desperation of the wolf packs to survive had led them to overcome their fear of humans and venture into villages and combat zones to find food. At first, the shy and silent wolves commenced eating sheep and goats from local farmers. But once they got rid of the livestock to feed their cubs, they grew bolder and went after the people. A brief report from the El Paso Herald said at the time, quote, As the beasts are very hungry, they penetrate the villages and kill calves, sheep, goats, and other livestock. In two cases, children have been attacked by them. Then they came for the soldiers, Russians and Germans alike. But the canines were not foolish. The packs gathered and figured out a cunning strategy to hunt down the apex predator in the region. First, the wolf packs went after the men wounded in battle. Those who were crippled and could not move during the night were quickly silenced in the middle of the night. Then, the canines went after the rear guards who dared to venture into the woods without proper support. They were viciously attacked by the cunning packs of starving wolves. 
the men were never seen again. The situation quickly escalated, and the soldiers realized that they had to get rid of the wolves. A New York Times article from 1917 said, quote, Poison, rifle fire, hand grenades, and even machine guns were successfully tried in attempts to eradicate the nuisance, but all to no avail. The wolves, nowhere to be found quite so large and powerful as in Russia, were desperate in their hunger and regardless of danger. Fresh packs would appear in place of those that were killed by the Russian and German troops. As the wolves gathered and noticed their high rate of success, they grew bolder and territorial. The night attacks turned into a daylight frenzy, where the wolves desperately attacked freshly wounded men in the middle of the firefights. Besides rifle fire, machine gun bursts, gas, artillery shells, and pneumonia, soldiers began to fear the wolves. Their howls did not let them sleep at night. Something had to be done at once. During one battle, a pack of wolves ventured into the battlefield and began to eat the wounded. German and Russian scouts immediately stopped the firefight and joined forces to eradicate the wolves. An Oklahoma City Times note from February 1917 said, quote, Parties of Russian and German scouts met recently and were hotly engaged in a skirmish when a large pack of wolves dashed onto the scene and attacked the wounded. Hostilities were at once suspended, and Germans and Russians instinctively attacked the pack, killing about 50 wolves. As a last resort to eradicate the wolf plague, commanders from each side entered negotiations for a truce and joined forces to get rid of the wolf menace. Like the 1914 Christmas truce, the Alliance met its goal and momentarily bonded the fighting men. The New York Times article described the outcome, quote, For a short time, there was peace, and in no haphazard fashion was the task of vanquishing the mutual foe undertaken. The wolves were gradually rounded up, and eventually several hundred of them were killed. The others fled in all directions, making their escape from carnage the like of which they had never encountered. The German-Russian alliance managed to kill over a hundred wolves, effectively driving off the remaining packs from the region. Nurse Natalia Linka, in her memoirs of the war, would go on to write about her encounter with wolves, quote, Suddenly a lingering, grabbing for the soul, a howl cut through the deep silence of the night. Not far from us, on white snow, slowly a small pack of wolves passed, moving in lines, one after another. They approached us, sometimes stopped, and lifting their muzzles up, howled softly and sadly. When the wolves finally left the combat zone, the uneasy alliance broke, and the soldiers got back to the usual business, killing each other on the battlefield without the interruptions of wolves. <laughs>